So we can split fractions up into two categories. All right? A uh, fraction where the numerator is greater than the denominator, where the top number is bigger, is called an improper fraction. And a fraction the other way around, where the denominator is bigger than the numerator, that's called a proper fraction. Okay, I've got these two quick examples here. Three-tenths, that's a proper fraction, because three is bigger than ten. Uh, and ten-thirds is an improper fraction, because ten is bigger than three. So the reason I'm uh, talking about improper fractions is because they, they connect to this other way of writing fractions called a mixed fraction, right? And I, I've got an example of it here. Uh, the reason we call this a mixed fraction is because it's a mixture of an integer part, that's the three, and a fraction part, that's the two-fifths. Uh, and what we'd like to be able to do here is, uh, is convert back and forth between these. So I, I want to take this mixed fraction and rewrite it as an improper fraction. Right now, technically, here's the way you do this, right? Three and two fifths. You notice the way I said that, three and two fifths, right? Well, in math, uh, and means plus. So really, this is another way of saying three plus two fifths. And now we have something we can deal with, right? Because we know how to add fractions. I'm going to make that three into an explicit fraction, right? Make it three over one. Uh, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of that first fraction by 5, so we have a common denominator. 3 times 5 is 15. 1 times 5 is 5. And now I can just add the, add the tops, right? 15 plus 2 is 17. And there you go. Okay. That is the official, technically correct way of doing this. It's also a little cumbersome, right? You have to rewrite it as an addition problem and then common denominators. And there, there's just a lot going on there. And, and it's more than you need to do. Right? Here's the quick and dirty way of, of doing this conversion. Right? I'm back to 3 and 2 fifths, same fraction. I'm going to do a circle from the bottom around to the top. Right? So I'm going to do 5 times 3, that's 15. Then I'm going to do 15 plus 2, that's 17. And hey, look at what the numerator of my fraction was. Right? This is the quick way to do this. Multiply, add, there's your numerator. The denominator just stays the same. So how about if we want to go the other way? Right? What if we want to take something like 17 fifths uh, and convert that into a mixed fraction? Okay, this is just a division problem. And unfortunately, it, it, it is a little bit a manual division problem because what I really need to know is the remainder. Right, so if we divide 5 into 17, we get 3 with a remainder of 2. And those numbers give me the two parts of my mixed fraction. The whole number part is, is the whole number part. Right, That's the 3. So the 3 goes out in front. The remainder becomes the new numerator. And just so we saw in the previous example, uh, the denominator stays the same. So 17 fifths, you can see I converted it back into 3 and 2 fifths. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you here. Mathematicians, math professors, we really don't like mixed numbers very much. Uh, and, and the reason is that they're hard to work with. I mean, multiplying 3 and a third times 4 and an eighth is not easy. Uh, it turns into this big foil thing. You have to multiply all the individual parts. It's a mess, right? So 99% like of the time, if I see a mixed number, the very first thing I'm going to do is convert it into an improper fraction. And then I've got all the methods we've talked about so far. Um, so why do we talk about this all if we dislike them so much? Well, they, there are a, a handful of applications uh, where they do come up. Uh, just off the top of my head, cooking is one of them. Uh, you'll, you'll see a recipe will say, you know, three and a third cups of flour, for example. Uh, so they are out there. You will see them from time to time, which is why we just kind of mention them in passing, uh, sort of just a making people aware of them situation. Um, but it's not something that you're really going to see very often in practice. Okay, so looking ahead, uh, th this pretty much wraps up our discussion of rational numbers or, or fractions, if you prefer. Um, we're we're going to continue building, right? Remember, and this is a while back, um, but our, our original program here was to come up with a number system that didn't have any missing bits. Uh, and unfortunately the rational numbers do have some missing pieces. Uh, so in the next lecture, we're going to take the next step up 
uh, and th this will more or less be the last step up uh, and talk about something called irrational numbers.